The Lord be with you. you. Christ is risen. risen I would like to give a big shout out to all of you for joining us in worship this fine Easter morning. Thank you to all of you who are here with us and are in the sanctuary. Thank you to everybody who's tuning in from home. For today, we are one church worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Would like to welcome Rachel, who is back with us as our ASL interpreter. Would like to uh, give a big shout out to all those participating in music and the worship service today. Also, a reminder for those of you here, if you would sign your name in the friendship pad, send it down the pew that you may greet one another by name following the service today. We have a really big bulletin with lots and lots of activities, and I'm only going to highlight about two things. I'll let you read the rest. I want to make sure that you know that this coming week, uh, the church staff is off. Organizations that we have, uh, mission and outreach organizations, will still meet, but the staff gets a week off uh, this week. And next Sunday is Holy Humor Sunday. So uh, Kate is our producer, director, editor, writer. She does everything. And in between all the beautiful services this week, we have been doing crazy filming that involved multiple people, even those outside the church, into the city. So it is funny, and you will enjoy it next Sunday as we all watch from home. I would like to highlight this beautiful insert. This is Easter dedication, so take a look at all those for whom you give God thanks, for those who passed, for all those for whom you give God thanks and honor. I will let you read the rest of the bulletin, but don't read it during Kate's sermon. (laughs) I got your back, man. So just uh, I want to take you to the prayer list and highlight a few folks. Jan Prentice recently entered Marywood Rehabilitation due to shoulder pain and weakness. Betsy Hughes is in the house today. This woman had two surgeries a week apart. Obviously, you came through hip surgery really well. And then she got some awesome news. The pathology report arrived this past Friday, and there is no cancer. Yes. How wonderful. And then we want to continue to remember all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We want to remember the Calhoun, the Hertenstein, and the Hartzell families. Our four families of the week that we ask you to pray for this week, Mark and Lisa Adams, the Bennies, the Hardums, and the Parnell families. Now I would like to draw your attention. We're going to be having a scripture reading. And it's Song of Solomon, chapter 2, 10 through 12. Lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. This is a new day, a day of celebration, for God has given us a new birth. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. He's rescued us from the darkness. He's brought us out of despair. In him we have redemption. In him we have mercy. In him we have forgiveness. Today we stand in Christ a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Today we celebrate our Savior, our Deliverer, our Redeemer. Sin is conquered, death is defeated, the grave is empty, and Jesus is alive. This is a new day. This is Easter. Charge! 
charge. Stop. Did you hear it? The stone roll, the grave clothes being folded. The body rise. It was like a whispered alleluia in the stillness of the dawn, but it was real. Did you hear it? The angels muffled laughter as the women reached the tomb. The dawn break over the garden, revealing footprints in the dew. The mountains bow in slow grandeur just out of the corner of your eye. It was like something shifting at the edge of your sight, but it was real. Did you hear it? The world hold its breath. The stars hesitate. The sun linger, creation fill its lungs, the air swell so that the whole earth can proclaim Christ is risen. This is resurrection morning.
Good morning. Please stand as you are able and join me in this morning's call to worship as printed in your order of service. If you are worshiping with us from home, you will see your responses on your screen. The tomb is empty. The soldiers have returned home. The anger of the crowds is gone. The time of grieving is, has ended. Christ is risen. Violence, fear, and death have disappeared. Christ is risen. Come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed.
You have heard what was written about Jesus in scriptures, how he would suffer and die and then rise from the dead on the third day, how through his death and resurrection, the forgiveness of sin is now possible for all who repent. So let us boldly approach the throne of God where we will find grace and mercy. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Wondrous God, we confess that at times when doubts and fears override our hope and faith, forgive us when we lose sight of the joy of your love and instead fall into despair and gloom. Lift up our spirits, Lord, and help us to remember the promise of new life here and now, not just the hope of resurrection. The tomb is empty. The stone is rolled away. There is no darkness now, only light. God continues to renew us and restore us. We are forgiven, loved, and restored, receiving the gift and promise of new life and resurrection now. Thanks be to God. to join us in our interactive scripture reading. And as Kathy and I read the scripture, you will notice there are certain key words that invite you to do different things. So for instance, when you hear the word morning, you're gonna yawn loudly and stretch. When you hear the word Mary, you're gonna say, run, Mary, run, Mary, run. Run, Mary, run, Mary, run. And when you hear the word body, you're gonna say head, shoulders, knees, and toes. When you hear the word stones, you're going to shout, yo, Adrian. Wow, you guys got it, right? So I don't need to go any further. Okay, perfect. So on the morning, after the Sabbath, Mary, Magdalene, Salome, and Mary, run, Mary, run, Mary, run, the mother of James, bought some spices to put on Jesus' body. I'm alive! Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> Did I hear a hey in there? <laughs> Very early on Sunday morning, just as the sun was coming up, the Marys, run, run Mary, run, Mary, run, went to the tomb. On their way, the Marys, run, run Mary, run, run, Mary, run. And Salome were asking one another, who will roll the stone? Yo, Adrian! Away from the entrance for us. But when they looked, the Marys... Run, run Mary, run, run, Mary, run. And Salome saw that the stone... Yo, Adrian! 
had already been rolled away, and it was a huge stone. Yo, Adrian! The Marys, run, Mary, run, Mary, run, and Salome went into the tomb, and on the right side they saw an angel. Ah! In a white robe sitting there, they were alarmed. Woo, woo, woo! The angel said, don't be alarmed. Woo, woo, woo. You are looking for Jesus. I'm alive. From Nazareth, who was nailed to a cross, God has raised him to life, and Jesus I'm alive. isn't here. You can see the place where they put his body. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Now go and tell his disciples. and especially Peter, that Jesus, I'm alive, will go ahead of you to Galilee. The disciples, will see him there, just as Jesus, I'm alive, told you. When the Marys, run, Mary, run, Mary, run, and Salome ran from the tomb, they were confused and shaking all over. They were too alarmed woo, woo, woo. to tell anyone what the angel ah. had told them about Jesus. I'm alive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Stories of the Bible. God is with us. This is Jesus. hey -o. Jesus is the Savior of the world and the Son of God. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing. And they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. For he was risen. He was alive. Huh? Hey ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. Jesus told his disciples that he did all the things that God had told everyone that he would do, and the disciples understood what he was saying. Yep, that makes sense. He told them that he would send the Holy Spirit, just as God had promised to be their helper. Sounds good. After Jesus had spent 40 days with the disciples and appeared to many people, Hey, that's it! He led the disciples to a place called Bethany. Jesus blessed the disciples and told them to go out and tell the whole world about him and the good news of forgiveness and make disciples of them. Then he said, be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Then Jesus was taken into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. Not long after that, the Holy Spirit did come to the disciples to be their helper. The disciples knew that God would truly be with them always. And the Holy Spirit is still with us today, for Jesus promised that he would be with us to the end of the age, and he is. Would the children please come forward? Woohoo! Have a seat.
Come on up. All right, sit down. Take your, take, but not on the chair. <laughs> sit down anywhere. <laughs> That's true. All right. Okay, so does anyone know what Sunday this is? Raise your hand if you do. Raise your hand if you do. Okay, everybody, when I say one, two, three, you're going to yell it out. You ready? One, two, three. Easter! Easter <laughs> well, that's true. It's Easter and it's opening day, <laughs> which is why Pastor Kelly's wearing this today. Little baseball shirt, little VBS, right? So I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the story of Jesus. And so I wanted to know if somebody could read from my Bible. Look at my Bible. It's all taped up. I've worn it out. Who can read for me today? How about you, young lady? All right. Can you see it right here? So the tricky part is you're going to read that verse, and then you're going to turn the page and read the next verse. But I'm going to put the mic on for you so we can all hear. Uh, yeah, just start right there and then turn the page. When the Sabbath was over, Mary, what is this? Let me see. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene. And Mary, the mother of James and Simone, yeah. brought spe spices. spices so that they might go and anoint him. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and anoint him. Mm-hmm. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us to entrance the tomb? Excellent. Good job. Very good job. Woo. All right, so let me tell you what's happening. So Jesus had some pretty cool friends, right? And... These three friends were coming to the tomb. So remember, he had died on the cross, and they put his body in a tomb. And then three days later, on the first Easter morning, these three women came, and they were going to anoint his body. But while they're walking there, they're like, wait a minute. That stone is huge. Who is going to roll the stone away so we can get to Jesus. Can anyone tell me who rolled the stone away? Yes. Um, actually, I don't, I don't, what? Um, I, I actually, if I remember the Bible correctly, which is why I'm wearing the Bible, but, um, it, uh, wasn't it G, uh, the Holy, I don't know, it was the Holy Spirit or Jesus that did it? Close. Angels, right. And so it, it was like a big scene, right? So I hear these three women come along, and all of a sudden when they get there, the stone rolls away, and this angel sits on top of the stone, and he says, you know, basically, why did you come? He has risen. risen. Exactly. That's right. He's risen from the dead. So let me show you. So... Pastor Kate lifted this really heavy stone that's in her yard. So imagine, have you ever tried to lift a heavy stone? No. Have you, have you been able to do it, or did you have to get friends to help you out? I've never done it before. You've never done it before? Yeah, could people lift it? Uh -huh. and we had to, like, we, oh, you like, had to lift it up? No, 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 no. Like, we had groups of kids who were helping out adults. And like, it took like, three adults and like, four of wow. kids to lift it up. So that's like seven people seven. to lift a stone, right? So how big do you think that stone was in front of a tomb? Uh, it was like super tall. Hey, hey, Don Hughes, would you stand up? Don Hughes is super tall. And the stone was taller than Don Hughes. It was big. So hang on, hang on. So 
What I want you to remember, this stone is a reminder. So when you see stones, even little stones or really big stones, they should remind you of Easter when Jesus came out of the tomb and he was alive. Isn't that incredible? So we just saw a video before you came up. And when you, when you see a video, they say, this is Jesus. And what does Jesus say? Okay, let's try it again. Everybody, this is Jesus. All right. Okay, so we have a very special person named Heather, and she made Jesus Hayo stickers for all of you. Is that cool or what? And then I'm going to ask Don Hughes again to take this beautiful blue basket and put it on the black offering uh, tray so that all of the adults who want to can also have... A Jesus. Yeah. Oh, the choir's rocking today. All right. All right. So everybody stand up. All right. We're going to say a prayer. Are you ready? You got to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we thank you for rising from the dead so we could all have eternal life with you. We love you. Amen. All right, so you ready for the Lord's Prayer? Who's my volunteer today? Are you ready? Okay, let me see. We're on. So everybody turn this way. Okay, let's start. Heavenly Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, my Lord in name, the kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, for forgive us our debtors, as we forgive our debtors, and leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power for glory, glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, I'll take the microphone. Thank you so much. Everybody needs a sticker. Oh, you're ready, you're ready. All right, then you may go back to your pews, to your families. There you go. All right. Ooh. Actually, wait, I need, actually, wait. Can I get two more? Two my siblings. Yes. I have two, I have two siblings. There you go. There you go. Looking good. There you go. Be careful with the stairs. Thank you. All right, you ready? Yeah. This morning we run. Not to a tomb, but away from it. Not to death, but to life. We run because we've seen the risen one. We run because we've witnessed your resurrection. We run because you are life. And your life is the light of all humankind. The light that shines the way to life. So we run toward the good news waiting around that corner, the astonishing miracle coming from that tomb where emptiness means victory and a dark space beats death, beats my death, which surely was around that corner had you not died for me, had you not risen for me. There at the empty tomb, where Mary heard her name called, and I hear my name too. I raise my hands in praise. Thank you, Lord, for your great sacrifice. You have risen. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from John's Eyewitness Gospel account 
of the resurrection of Jesus. Hear now God's words for you of this greatest event in all of human history. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the, for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the stri strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. This is the word of the Lord. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's, St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. I lost my page already. Hear now God's word for you today. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. But more than that, we are found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all others. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may all that we do and say on this morning of all mornings be well and good in your sight. Amen. Nothing is more American than apple pie than baseball. Our national pastime, the all-American game. Or is it? Many of us believe that the game of baseball was invented by U.S. Army officer Abner Doubleday in Cooperstown, New York in 1839. But my dear fellow Americans, I am so sorry to tell you that this little tidbit of American history has now been debunked by historians. And the game of baseball, the way it is played today, was actually invented by our neighbors across the river in Canada. Now, I don't know about you, but I now feel like I have been lied to my entire life. So perhaps when you think of baseball, you think of some of the greatest moments, like Babe Ruth stepping into the batter's box during Game 3 of the World Series in 1932, pointing his finger toward the center field stands, and then hitting a home run into that exact spot. Or maybe it was the time when the Boston Red Sox defeated the New York Yankees in the 2004 American League Championship Series after trailing three games to none, making an unprecedented comeback that so few sports teams are ever able to accomplish. Maybe you're familiar with other great moments in the game like Willie Mays and the catch, or the significance of Jackie Robinson taking the field, or how Reggie Jackson was named Mr. October for his amazing stats that he would have during playoff games in the heart of that month. 
Or the time Randy, the big unit Johnson, hit a bird with a pitch. Or that heartfelt, heartbreaking speech given by Lou Gehrig the day he retired from the game after having been diagnosed with ALS and saying how he was the luckiest man on the face of the earth. For us Metro Detroiters, maybe we think of such legends as Ty Cobb and Al Kaline, sweet Lou Whitaker, Sparky Anderson, Alan Trammell, and Miguel Cabrera when we think of baseball. Or maybe you have fond memories of the roar of 84 when our Tigers last won a World Series and how the phrase, bless you boys, was splashed all over town. I remember vividly sitting on the floor of my family room watching when the Tigers clinched the championship. And for some reason, I especially remember that final out made by Larry Herndon as he caught the fly ball in left field. Maybe when you think of baseball, you hearken back to your own glory days as a ball player yourself. Whether you only played Little League or perhaps you eventually played more competitively in college or high school, or maybe you still play with the local rec league. I had the great joy of being a ball player and I loved the simple things of the game, like the smell of my mitt, the feel of the ball hitting right in that sweet spot or the sound of my spikes crunching on the gravel. Maybe you think about the magic of going to the ballpark on a perfect summer day, the sounds of the field from the crack of the bat to the stadium vendors shouting as they walk up and down the stairs, the smell of hot dogs and stale beer, or the sight of peanut shells at your feet. But for me, ultimately when I think of baseball, I think of the voice of Tiger Baseball, the voice of the turtle, the voice of my childhood, Ernie Harwell. Like many of you, I would imagine, my summers growing up in Michigan were filled with days fishing at the local pond, running through the sprinklers, bike rides, and Tiger Baseball. I remember going to bed with the windows open, the sun not quite fully set, and having the ball game playing quietly on my radio, falling asleep to Ernie's voice. I also remember those late spring nights when I started playing softball and after my games, riding in my parents' Mustang convertible, still dusty from the field on our way to Baskin Robbins for some ice cream, and the voice of Ernie wafting through the wind from the road. Ernie's voice, so unmistakable. So easy to listen to, so soothing. Tigers baseball and Ernie Harwell, a magical combination that informed my childhood of growing up in Metro Detroit, as I'm sure is the case for many of you as well. Ernie Harwell, the only sports broadcaster to have ever been traded to another team for an actual player. Ernie Harwell, a transplant from Georgia who became a Michigan treasure. Ernie Harwell, a United States Marine Corps sergeant. Ernie Harwell, a great man of faith, as evidenced by his reading scripture every opening day. In many speeches over his lifetime, he would often say, I'm a turtle on a fence post. You know when you see a turtle on a fence post, he didn't get there by himself. This was his creative and humble way of giving credit for his success to other people, and that without others' help, he would not have ended up where he did. Personally, I think we are all turtles on a fence post in light of quite simply being children of God, all now made complete and redeemed through the resurrection of Jesus. You see, on that first opening day when the earth stood still as the tomb was opened, all of humanity became turtles on fence posts, placed in positions that we could never get to on our own. And that is a place of redemption, a place of grace, and a place where we have been given the opportunity to have the fullness of life. And we did not get there on our own. So I wonder if it is possible that we have lost our sense of wonder, or maybe 
still haven't even found our sense of wonder as to what Easter truly means and how cataclysmic, life-changing, time-changing, earth-shattering of an event Jesus' resurrection really is. Billions of people have died throughout history. But the world has only reset its entire calendar system in honor of one life. And it's powerful evidence for the historicity of the resurrection of Jesus. There is no fairy tale or fable or story or parable that has impacted the course of history in this way. If the resurrection was a farce and brought about from the mind of a creative storyteller, it never would have spawned a worldwide movement that has lasted for millennia. People would not be willing to die for a fable. Bob Perry is a Christian apologetics writer, teacher, and speaker, and he also has 37 years of military and commercial flying experience. And he writes the following about Jesus' resurrection. Just outside the cockpit door of every commercial airliner, there is a telephone handset that allows the flight attendants to talk to the pilots. And inside the cockpit of every commercial airliner is a door unlock switch at the center console that allows the pilots to open the cockpit door without getting out of their seats. If a flight attendant had knocked on my cockpit door at 8.45 a.m. on September 11, 2001, and asked me if she could come up front, I would have unlocked the door while I was still on the phone with her. I wouldn't have hesitated for a second. But by 9.15 a.m. that same morning, the passengers of United Flight 93 had already figured out that that was a bad idea. They were storming the cockpit of the Boeing 757 over southern Pennsylvania for that very reason. What changed during those 30 minutes? We all know what changed. The collective mindset of the entire world changed. And it's called an impact event. An incident so shocking, it has the power to, to change not just what we think, but the way we think about everything. And the resurrection of Jesus was indeed an impact event. The idea of a resurrection had been a tangential doctrinal variant for the Jews, but for some of them, it morphed overnight into the central tenet of their faith. Opinions about life after death had been all over the map, but suddenly, Jews were remarkably unanimous about one thing, the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. And that changed everything else. Their Jewish religious and temple worship rites weren't exempt. They went from practicing animal sacrifice to preaching on Christ's sacrifice. They claimed that the binding law of Moses had been fulfilled, that baptism and communion had replaced circumcision as the symbol of their faith. They even changed their weekly day of worship from Saturday to Sunday. It was like the world had experienced some kind of cataclysmic impact event, because it had. These rapid sweeping changes in thinking and habits are documented history, and that is what makes Christianity so unique. It's not just a faith system or a list of rules for healthy living, and it's not a self-help program based on having a friendly relationship with God. Christianity is based on an epic story, but the story is true. It's historically verifiable, and the central event in the story is the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. The truth of Christianity lives and dies pun intended, on the resurrection. If you want to falsify the Christian story, just prove that Jesus never rose from the dead. That is the point the Apostle Paul was making in 1 Corinthians 15. If the resurrection of Jesus was not an actual historical event, you can dismiss us Christians as fools. 
So I love the way Bob Perry has described all of this and has put our worship today into a celebration of an impact event. Because Easter truly is a holiday like no other. And as Christians, we must do our best to understand that Christianity is not just another form of spirituality, but it is a belief system based on scientifically unexplainable historical events. And if this isn't true, then like St. Paul said in his letter to the Corinthians, if Christ hasn't been raised, then our faith is futile. And this historical fact of resurrection leads to a life of comfort in knowing that believing there is so much more to our existence as God's children than what we can see and touch in the here and now. We have a hope that goes beyond this life into eternity. St. Paul said that if only for this life we have hope in Christ, then we are to be pitied more than all people. Put another way, like Bob Perry said, if the resurrection of Jesus was not an actual historical event, then you can dismiss us Christians as fools. I don't know about you, but I'm not really interested in being called a fool. But that is essentially what St. Paul is saying about all of us who believe in Jesus' resurrection if it never happened. And thanks be to God, it did. And we are no fools. N.T. Wright says that with Jesus' resurrection, Paul insists a new world has opened up in which the all-embracing power of sin and death no longer holds sway. The world we know, the world whose loveliness, majesty, fragrance, and teeming life are mocked by death, decay, corruption, and sheer entropy has heard the news that there is, after all, a way forward, a way into a life yet greater and more beautiful and more powerful than this one. Take away Jesus' resurrection and all that is put into doubt. So doubt no more, my friends, because by the grace of God, Jesus did rise from the grave, and that's a fact that cannot be disputed, though many will try. As baseball has shaped the fabric of American culture, resurrection has shaped the fabric and culture of the world. Do you know what the rarest play in baseball is? It's the unassisted triple play. What that means is that one player made three outs in the same play without the assistance of anyone else. And that is what God has done. In three days, he made the rarest to play in all of, human, in all of humanity, and that was single-handedly resurrecting his own son from the dead. Let's put it another way. Why did God do what he did? Because it was game over for us as human beings, thanks to our punishment of death due to our sinful natures. Yet here in the bottom of the ninth inning, or for us softball players, the bottom of the seventh inning, God steps up to the plate and hits a walk-off home run on our behalf. He hit his walk-off, he hit his walk-off sin and death ending home run by resurrecting his son on the third day. And for this reason, we should be emptying the bench and running out to meet God as he crosses home plates. It's like being at a game and the excitement you feel when your team scores. We all get on our feet, we high-five one another, we cheer, we clap, we spill our drinks on the person in front of us, and they don't care because our team just scored, and we don't care that we got drinks spilled on us too. That is how celebrating resurrection should feel, because there truly is no greater celebration than the celebration of life and the celebration of a life knowing and embracing the power of God's love and the amazing gift of grace is a treasure. And this is something worth shouting from the rooftops every day. Jesus Christ is risen indeed, and for that reason, death will no longer have sway in our lives, and it will no longer be feared. So may we all be inspired by God's walk-off home run of resurrection 
May we all be inspired to play this game of life to the best of our abilities, knowing that we are loved and cherished by the Creator. May we all be inspired by the tenacious love of Jesus and be willing to let our lives reflect that fact. We are indeed turtles on a fence post because of God's walk-off home run. The tomb is open. Jesus is alive. It's opening day. Amen. for helping me out with this. The kids really love Easter. Hmm. Who doesn't love Easter, am I right? <laughs> yeah, it's true, but if you think about it, that first Easter must have been really rough for Jesus. Wow, I never really thought of that. Hmm. Wonder what happened to that guy. Well, you know, he died on the cross. You sure about that? Yeah. 
No, mm -mm. no, nope. that's a different guy. I'm talking about the Jesus that, um, um, what's his last name? No, no, it's the same guy. Really? Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, I guess I never really <laughs> connected the two before. Jesus on a cross. Huh. Wonder what ever happened to that guy. <laughs> really? He came back to life three days later. What? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we're still talking about the tomb, Jesus, yeah? Yeah. That's the same guy? Yeah. Jesus who died on the cross for our sins? No, uh-uh. That's a different Jesus. No, 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 no. He died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, came back to life three days later, now sits at the right hand of God? Wait, 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 wait. Cross Jesus is the same as the right hand of God Jesus? Jesus Murphy. Same Jesus, by the way. Yeah. There's no separate Jesuses? No, there's no separate Jesuses. Oh my God. I just never really put that all together before. Huh? Oh, my God. It's still the same guy. Wait, you understand what this means, don't you? One guy did all of that. I mean, this changes history. This changes everything. That is big. He deserves more than just jelly beans for his birthday. So the Easter no, Bunny... No, no, stop. Jesus, Murphy. Same guy. No. Sorry about that. I got caught up in the video. <laughs> Wow, church staff, huh? We are now at the point of our service where we give God thanks for all that we have been given. What an amazing, incredible place this is. So much outreach and mission, Christian education, our youth. We are so, so blessed. We are so, so, so blessed by your generosity that makes it all happen. And so now, by God's grace living through us, by being a thankful and full of gratitude congregation on this wonderful Easter morning, it's time to receive our offering. How we do that, you can do that on your phone. You can wait till after service and drop an offering into the black receptacle. However you give, in whatever way you give, know that all that you give goes to the ministry and the work and the mission of this congregation. And we thank God for you.
anybody need a? And we have the taller kids in the back. You may be seated. Before the prayer, just want to say thank you again to all of you who stuck with me. It's uh, been 11 and a half weeks since I've had not one but two knee surgeries. So I, uh, I can't make it to hang out in the back after worship. So here is my collective hug. <laughs> soon, soon I will get there. Let us pray. Glorious God, we rejoice in Jesus' victory over death. You raised him up to live forever. Robed in white, Christ leads us from darkness to light. And we dedicate these offerings in gratitude of the breaking dawn of Jesus. As he was offered in obedience to you, O God, we offer ourselves and our gifts to be used in your service. And as you took Jesus' sacrifice and filled it with your life and power, so use our gifts to transform our lives that we may be a living presence of your reign on earth. For the tomb has been rolled away, light breaking through darkness, the first opening day that would bring about the church. Faith communities like ours here at RGPC, brothers and sisters in Christ who journey life together, the ups, the downs, praying as we go, stepping into the footsteps of your son Jesus together. For today, we pray for all those on our prayer list. We especially lift up Jan, Betsy, Ken, the Calhouns, the Hertensteins, the Hartzels, and also the Adams, the Bennies, the Hardums, and the Parnell families. For quiet and persistent God, you work miracles in the silent hush before the dawn. Strong and surprising God, you roll away every stumbling stone and bring life to all our dead ends. Whirling and dancing God, you delight in empty tombs and surprising visits. Easter God, 
you give us joy and cause an alleluia to flow from head to toe. Risen God, forever rising in us, you are the source of our hope and joy. Empower us now by the power of your Holy Spirit to wake up to each new day, living Jesus' hope out loud. Amen. Christ is risen. <laughs> Two quick announcements. In the back, we have some uh, stadium goodies for you. There are hot pretzels and cracker jacks and, uh, well, pigs in a blanket instead of hot dogs. So please help yourselves. If you ordered a flower to take home with you, please grab those flowers on your way out today. There will not be staff in the building this week to take care of your flowers. So please be sure to grab them. So my friends, please never forget, we are indeed turtles on fence posts. We did not get here on our own. We got here because of God's walk-off home run on that first opening day. So now, my friends, may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you this day. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Amen.